welcome one and all to Umami Manga. I'm Petter and this is James. Yo! And today we're talking about volume three of A Bride's Story. Quick summary for this volume, Mr. Smith gets to know Talas and her mother as he stays in their home for some time. He leaves after turning down Talas's mother's proposal for him to marry Talas. But then he gets accused of being a spy and <laughs> spends some time in prison. Uh, when he is eventually freed, he is introduced to his guide, Ali, and he is reunited with Amir, Karluk, and Paria as well. Then Talas arrives too, and uh, she and Mr. Smith essentially get engaged to one another mm -hmm. before heading back to her place. Uh, the others then go out eating at the market in a delicious-looking chapter. Meanwhile, Mr. Smith and Talas are forced to separate, leaving Mrs. Smith confused and depressed, and ultimately Henry Smith and Ali, son of Ishmael, depart and are now heading to Ankara. Indeed. So it was a very Mr. Smith-focused volume, which I really enjoyed. Yeah, I actually didn't expect to be, at least this early in the story, to have this Mr. Smith focus. I, I, I did think we were going to follow Mr. Smith, but I thought we would get, you know, kind of his point of view at a different bride situation and not have him be the, the love interest, you know, yeah. uh, at least not yet. I, I, did, <laughs> I did say in our previous discussion that I thought that could be a possibility for him if he was single, which he is. Right. <laughs> but yeah, so I, 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 but I just wasn't expecting for this kind of a plot to happen right away. But here we are. And not only did it happen, it was, it was quite tragic how it ended. Very. Yeah, yeah. I feel like th there's so much to talk specifically related to Mr. Smith. So let's start by talking about Henry Smith, as we learn his first name as well in this volume. Mm -hmm. uh, and we even got to see his eyes for the first time, because I don't think we had seen his eyes in either of the first two books. Uh, Probably so that not. Was, that was also pretty nice. But uh, after having temporarily lost his all of his belongings at the market, he was invited to stay with Talas and her mother, or I guess her mother-in-law, technically. Mm -hmm. And he is presented with this idea of marrying Talas. And it just kind of came out of nowhere, seemingly, in, <laughs> like, in the moment there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Must have been very stressful for, for him. But I did enjoy seeing his reaction to it and, and kind of the culture clash that came with all of that, mm -hmm. it was interesting. He was pretty, I guess, it, well, he was definitely considering it uh, uh, the whole time. He, he was thinking about what should he do, you know? Mm -hmm. um, obviously, he came to the conclusion that, no, this, this can't work out. Like, I, I just can't get engaged to a person while I'm uh, traveling. It, it, it just doesn't, doesn't fit my lifestyle. Mm. But I, he was, seemed like he was open to the idea at the very least right right i think he was torn i mean he he definitely was uh -huh. and, for, and for various reasons like as you said like his lifestyle for one is something that makes it a difficult thing while he at the same time probably had some of those thoughts at the same time but i think he was also hesitant and uncomfortable about it to some extent due to the background that he comes from or like the culture that he grew up with like getting married right. that easily, that quickly. <laughs> Obviously, it, it's not something that one would do where he's from, but it is seemingly more common in this part of the world, or at least in this time and in this part of the world. Yeah. But then, of course, over the course of the volume, it definitely becomes clear that there are some types of feelings uh, for the situation and for, for Talas uh, that, are, that are growing in him. And I liked how it, it was through his initiative that they actually basically got engaged to one another uh, when Henry gave her the, the gold watch. Very true. Very true. I did think it was maybe a little quick how it all went down. At the very end of the volume, it does kind of feel like as he's looking up at the stars and, you know, throwing the watch, he's like, what just happened? <laughs> like, you know, mm. It almost kind of feels that way. Uh, obviously, yeah. he was also very heartbroken um, with everything that occurred. 
I don't doubt that for sure. But it just it was just so so quick, uh, at least in my opinion, to go from strangers to lovers <laughs> to never see each other again. <laughs> yeah, and and I think it's that kind of abrupt or abruptness of it all mm-hmm. that makes it kind of hurt so much for him. I or at least I can imagine. Yeah, because he definitely got invested emotionally. Uh, yeah. Uh, over the course of the of of their time knowing each other, like that, that, I don't think there is any doubt of that. So of course, it wasn't easy, yeah, emotionally, you know, when their plans were thrown into chaos, as as the book puts it. And, yeah. And it's so fast and confusing, and and it's it's a mess. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, swept up in a culture he just doesn't understand from the very beginning. Right. From the whole take her to wife, uh, never mind. <laughs> yeah, we'll do that ourselves. Like you know, oh. it's like ah, uh. and, and it, it does feel like he was pressured into all of this too. Yeah. You know, in a way. So yeah. I kind of, I I do feel bad in that instance, but at the same time, I respect him for, you know, once he makes a decision, he's he was going to be dedicated to it, as any yeah. good person or a good good man, and I guess our Western society would would be but that doesn't mean much in in there not not to saying obviously loyalty is important to them of course but mm. the kind of bonds that they created the the engagement that they created was not something that their culture uh was going to honor they have a different method of course uh, so right it's mm-hmm. it's just how how it is precisely and like speaking of the engagement and like with the the gold watch and how it was ultimately returned to him after everything was broken off and ended as abruptly as we were talking about Mm -hmm. he threw the watch away yeah despite how valuable it seems to be and i i think that's probably because it was just too painful to have it and because it because it reminded him of what just happened and what he just lost yeah and so carrying that around was definitely something heavy something negative kind of at that point yeah i think it's a sign of him trying to move on in a way but obviously it would bring up bad bad memory so Mm. you know throw it away uh and i'm not saying that he's gonna move on then quickly go on to the next pride i'm not i don't think that's what we're gonna be having here i'm also not putting that off the table for him to eventually maybe find Mm. somebody if not re- somehow returning to Talos. But I think that he, he's going to be scarred and hurt for a little while yet. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I don't think those feelings of romance will come in um, for a while. But I do think throwing the watch away is is probably a, a cathartic thing for him to do. Yeah. And I mean, and I, I, I also definitely think it's a possibility for Henry to to find a bride <laughs> somewhere in this part of the world uh, at some point, whether it's Talas or, or not. But mm-hmm. um, because, yeah, as, we, as with this volume, we know now for sure that he, he doesn't have anyone like that back home. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. You know what he does have back home? Guy's filthy rich. Guy's stacks of cash, money. Like, look, he's got that watch. Obviously, that's... That's not something that you can scoff at in terms of luxury. But he also has a home in India. Right. That, that the, precisely. <laughs> the man has family in England and then a, a summer house in India. I, we don't know if it's a summer house, but still. But, but a it, house, it, Another house yeah. in, in India. Yes. It's <laughs> crazy. Uh, yeah, right. And, and supposedly he has, spent, he has spent rather a lot of time in India. Uh, so like, yeah. that's supposedly a part of the world that he knows where he knows the customs and and the culture yeah pretty well already that was truly a british colony yeah uh pro- i assume at that time yeah but i don't think you can be someone of a lower class and have and have the ability to go back and forth and d- be doing all this research research and stuff like that mm. he's got to be he's got to be pretty loaded yeah right his family is. he definitely seems to be 
at least upper class on some level. Maybe maybe not super super necessarily upper class, but at least in the upper class. Yeah, somewhere pretty decently. It mm-hmm. it seems like, and I I also feel like the way he speaks kind of shows to that as well. Sometimes like his word choices and the way that he expresses himself just feels a little bit posher <laughs> or whatever you want to say. That's fair. That's um, fair. But um, another thing. Um, besides the his family situation that we were talking about last time regarding Mr. Smith was the possibility of whether or not he was a spy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which, funnily enough, was brought up in the... or was addressed in this volume. Yeah, pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, pretty quickly. In, in the middle, so... Yes. Didn't have long to wait. That was, that was fun. Yeah, it was fun. It does seem like the whole spy thread is not true. Uh, although I won't, I won't completely dismiss it. Mm-hmm. There's like that five percent chance that maybe he's <laughs> that good to somehow cover it all up. Right, he would be an like a truly masterful spy if if he is. At this only point. hire the best. Yeah, o- only hire the best. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I guess I guess it's technically possible, but yeah, I... yeah, technically possible. <laughs> but I, I I'm basically admitting that I, I was off on that. But the spy <laughs> thing did come into place yes surely right and i i was very happy that we got to ponder the possibility last time thanks to you bringing it up (laughs) so that was fun his i guess papers documents say he's a linguist doing field work Mm. what does that even what does it really mean mean like i guess he's just picking up on the language in the field Mm. wouldn't they say research or studying culture or something like that well, I guess if he, I if know. his niche or if his focus is is linguistics, then I guess it would have to be that. But I mean, he obviously he seems to have an interest for more than just the, the language. So, right. But but again, I guess those may be more personal things, like that may, he may not technically be researching officially or whatever. And you can argue you can't truly understand a language, at least as a master ling- linguistic or linguist, I should say, without understanding the culture, right? Uh, Yeah, Uh, no, that's... It does feel like culture and language are intertwined in many ways. Absolutely. But after he got out of prison, he finally got to meet his guide, the guy that he has has been looking for for several chapters at that point, (laughs) Um, Mm Candid. So that's a good thing. At the very least. Yeah. That, that's a win. In, in this volume that ultimately had some pretty <laughs> big losses, that's a win. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, like I said, end of the chapter to, feel, to me, he's just like, what just happened? <laughs> like, it just feels almost like a blur because he was meant just to meet his guide and then he got swept in all of this, uh-huh. I guess, drama. Yeah. You know, that could have been avoided if the if the guide was there on time or what <laughs> have true, you. True, true. <laughs> oh my god. But goodness. whatever. Yeah, yeah. But Mr. Smith is heading to Ankara in the Ottoman Empire. And in present day Ankara is the capital of Turkey. But back then I believe it was the capital of some specific region of the Ottoman Empire, which later became Turkey. Ah. Something along those lines, if if I did my research correctly. Um, so it's quite quite a ways away uh, from where they are. And in addition to that, we finally got some clarity on where in Central Asia the story so far has been taking place. Yeah. And it's not quite where we had expected it to be. It looks like it's right. uh, in Uzbekistan. So I, I guess not totally off of or from our assumptions, which had been uh, Turkmenistan, seeing as they are neighboring countries like we were not totally off but it's Mm -hmm. um yeah it it was indeed a bit further northeast than i had expected it would be but either way it's very nice to know now indeed yeah i was i i I was surprised because when i was doing my research it looked like the bread that paria was making was not so uzbekistan but turkmenistan Hmm. but they are pretty similar, so I could I could see that being easily confused by myself. <laughs> uh, fair. I mean, or or alternatively, maybe maybe Paria got some inspiration from 
Turkmenistanian culture <laughs> or something, mm. uh, potentially. It wouldn't be too strange, seeing as it is still geographically pretty close. But anything else on Henry Smith? No. Then let's move on to talk a bit about Talas. She was married to five brothers, one after the other. Wow. But one of them died off, or but well, e- e- each each of them died off uh, for one reason or another. That has got to be the worst luck. I mean, yeah. Maybe that's that's not as rare. Well, five brothers it seems to be abnormal. I also but, feel like that's abnormal, know. abnormally unlucky. Uh, like in in a different culture, like I bet Talas would have been accused of like being cursed or, or or being a witch or something like that. Yeah. Like it. <laughs> Shout out to Uzbekistan or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Being totally chill with it. <laughs> These things happen. Yeah. <laughs> Got bit by a snake. Of course you didn't summon a snake to bite. Are you guys crazy? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> oh. But yeah, very bad luck. Still young. I'm not sure how old she actually is and but, how quickly those five brothers died. Uh, yeah, she did get married when she was 16. She got yeah, so. Precisely. She was 16 when she married the first one. And it's said that she was with him for at least a few or a couple of years. Right. Um, right. And then she went through the other four. Um, we don't know how long that took. But I would think she's in her 20s. Though, like, she's probably at least a little bit older than Amir, is my is my thinking. Which is so funny, because her future father, previous uncle-in-law, right. was saying that, oh, she's so young, like, I can marry her off quickly, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And yet, everyone was saying, Amir, they look at Amir, it's like, oh, she's so old, I... she's 20. Ugh. So I don't, mm. it doesn't seem logical to me. Yeah, it's... But... I I wonder if, if if it's an oversight by Mori or if it or, or or if maybe just this this uncle was just desperate or something. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> he did he did kind of come off that way. Like he was very yeah. Very adamant adamant about taking responsibility in some way. Right. Precisely. So I guess I guess you could chalk it up to that. But yeah, she was Basically, throughout the volume, she was at at this risk of being forcibly married off mm-hmm. to a family that would very likely treat her terribly. Yeah. And by the end, I guess, I guess that's her fate, potentially. Well, I think that she may be in a better position than she was when the uncle first came in, because he wanted he wanted to marry her off to his son as a second wife, mm-hmm. but then that would just be, obviously, basically a maid service, a slave, if, or what have you. Mm-hmm. But I think in this case, he's actually going to try to marry her, give her a dowry, things like that. Uh, so it, it could actually end up being better for, for her than what it, than what it would have been. Mm, but obviously, right. she was going to be very happy with uh, Mr. Smith over here, Henry Smith. So mm. I, it's... It's definitely a a lot overall loss, but I'm not necessarily worried for her well being unless she gets married off to the freaking what what's that terrible family? N- n- oh, Numaji. That one terrible family, Numaji. Yeah. yeah. Unless she gets married oh. off to them somehow, then oh, oh, all that would are off. suck. Oh, that would suck. Uh, but um, but yeah, you 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 make a good point though. Like it's it's possible she may get a comparatively better outcome now hopefully yeah hopefully uh but i thought it was really cute when she was taking care of the 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 lamb yeah or the, the sheep in general i mean <laughs> it, it was interesting to see her do the chores and smith watch her but then when she was by herself she kind of lets her mm-hmm. hair out she plays around with the sheep yeah <laughs> uh kind of really shows that the playful side her playful side mm-hmm. that was I, I thought that was really nice to see and especially yeah when you look at these these outfits, they're very beautiful, but they do feel very stiff and almost containing, not, not very freeing. And for my yeah. modern Western mind, it, it does seem kind of restrictive and, and not appealing in, in terms of 
personal use, you know. Yeah, like com- comfortability and, wanna, and whatnot. Right. I very much want to take that off. Let the wind go through my hair. <laughs> yeah. Things like that. Right. I mean, if you like, if you just look at the at the image on the front cover of this volume, like the way she is dressed there is like, yeah, completely, probably very unpractical and uncomfortable, <laughs> at least in the long run. Maybe hard to move. Yeah. <laughs> I I I mean, surely this is the the bridal outfit, like when she's getting married. I think that's what it is. I believe so too. Yeah. Mm. But still. So at least she's not wearing that all the time. Although she probably <laughs> had to wear that five times. Still. So. Yeah. <laughs> And counting. And she was and precisely. Counting. She was prepared to do it another time, and she li- likely will somehow, sometime. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <sighs> she said a line that I really liked. I'm the one who should decide for me. Mm. I, I feel that I feel that's another refreshing thing about her. When, well, I think we have strong women in this story up to this point. Of course, it does feel like they aren't necessarily allowed to decide for themselves in, in some cases, especially when it comes to what their future entails, you know, staying with my mother-in-law mm. or finding a, a new husband. Obviously that's, that was the situation she was in without a patriarch. She kind of had to fend for herself in a way. Yeah. Uh, but now that that's, that patriarch role has been filled, now she really has no choice. So I guess, it's a moot moot point at this point at this point moot point at this point mm. it, it's a moot point but yeah. i don't know i i still i still feel like she has that desire to make the choice for herself and i wish that uh, that could have been the case but unfortunately it was taken away from her precisely yeah i, I believe she was in a pretty unique situation being without a father figure or father yeah. role you know in her life yeah, because uh, that definitely did make her freer in this in this uh, society. Yeah, yeah. Can I talk about the mother mother in law in this one who we don't have a name for? Yes, by all means. No, yeah, no name, which <laughs> kind of seems to be a running thing with Mori Sensei's story here. Mm. Uh, yes, she give names to certain characters, and thank goodness we got the whole family tree at the end of the first <laughs> volume that was very helpful uh-huh. but they're not always calling each other by names but and especially especially not the side characters that mm. names just don't come up people don't really introduce themselves except for ollie really i guess he introduced himself but yeah it just it's it's interesting how i would feel like in a, a normal story you would somehow get their name out in a way but it doesn't really matter to her to to mori you know it's very, right very interesting yeah uh, and i kind of like it because maybe it's a little more maybe you can argue it's a, a little more realistic although uh i think we're we're given our names pretty pretty frequently so maybe not right for introductions so i guess it is a bit strange yeah. that that talas's ma mom i guess because that's what she called her uh, that that yeah. that she didn't introduce herself to Henry when he arrived at their home, <laughs> uh, right, right. But yeah, yeah. Maybe just a way for us to not get too attached. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I do appreciate how much the mom cared for Talis. Um, surprisingly shrewd, you know, hiding Smith's horse so he couldn't <laughs> escape. But yeah. Uh, didn't work out um yeah like that that woman was determined to give talisa some sort of future yeah that, i that's respect sweet. her for that yeah I, again i do think feel like she was forcing smith into the situation mm-hmm. but in the end i think it was it was fine yeah or it would have been fine but whatever yeah yeah and then her new husband is a jerk I'm going to throw him in here. Of course. But maybe he's a jerk, but maybe, maybe he's doing all this out of the goodness of his heart within this cultural mindset. Maybe not at originally, originally, maybe it was just for his own benefit and just you know, say, well, there's this woman who's not doing anything. She can come work for me or under my family. But then taking on this role as father, he's, he's basically giving her a second chance at finding a new family and starting her own family. So I guess, 
I guess he's giving her a chance by by taking away the chance that she was already having. <laughs> right. Right. I, I don't see that yeah. as necessarily good. No. Plus, as I believe someone pointed out, I don't know if it was if it was Ali or someone else pointed out how he even before all this, like he he was never helpful to them, even though he was a relative. Yeah. So like very true. I, I don't have high hopes for this guy, sadly. But I mean it would be great if he had a change of heart after becoming the father of that family or whatever, like sure, that would be great, but I I'm not optimistic about it. I'm not yeah, I'm not saying like he's a, a great guy. But maybe it's one of those in their own way is trying to help. Uh, right. Mm. But I agree, like I agree with the characters in the story that they said the the uncle should have stepped in earlier than this, mm. uh, not when it came to forcing her to marry someone else or making that decision, whatever. Right. That's all I have on Talis and mother-in-law. Uh, me as well. Then next, let's talk about Ali, Mr. Smith's guide to Ankara. He comes from Tabriz or however that's supposed to be pronounced, uh, which I believe means he's Persian, because I looked up that that town or, or city or whatever it classifies as, and uh, it seems to be in present-day Iran, and I believe that was still called Persia back in this age? Yes, it was. But Ali worried about Mr. Smith's appearance. Like, one of the first things that he did was uh, to try to find a solution to try to make make Henry not look as white, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> uh, but ultimately, he decided to make Mr. Smith pose as a European doctor, despite not having any of those capabilities. So that's... Mm-hmm. I guess we'll see how that turns out, if, if they're going to keep <laughs> keep that up. <laughs> right. Right. I appreciate his tenacity in working as a guide and, and trying to get certain jobs so he can he can build up his own fortune and then eventually marry, start his own family. Right, right. Appreciate that work ethic. Bro is super picky. Like <laughs> not just about the food. I mean the food was one thing was pretty funny and it reminded me of the Kaguya chapter where they're all talking about making their fried rice. There's different ways to make fried rice. My be- my way is the best. Precisely. You know? Oh yeah, for um, sure. <laughs> and he, he was all all up in that. Uh huh. <laughs> guy's face but uh he's also kind of picky with or particular about how things should be done a very very set in his own culture and so when when smith is saying oh this is how i do it he's like what that's stupid it's it's like this mm, you know mm. uh he doesn't say stupid but he does he, he does kind of feel like he he's not very open-minded to smith's culture and, and things Right. Uh, it's like, well, the father should should do that. Like how you can't talk back to the father like that or you know, thing, things like that. Mm. Uh, so it would be interesting to see their journey together if there'll be any butting of heads. Uh I I don't think Smith would butt heads to be honest. I feel like Smith would yeah. just take it all in. For sure. But I'm sure he'll be correcting Henry very very many uh, a lot of times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And I I think I think that's a good I I think that'll make for a good dynamic. Uh, yeah for their for their coming journey here (laughs) yeah uh i also like how ali is very um very very good at exploiting at least as we see the captain of the guards here uh but i i reckon that's a trait of his that that we could see more of like just the way that he can take advantage of people when he when he sees an opportunity to Mm -hmm. i thought that was pretty fun yeah he's 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 pretty sly, I guess you could say. Yeah, yeah. Also shrewd. (laughs) I'm not familiar with snow melons. Uh, Me neither. Are you? No, I had never heard of them before before reading this. Yeah. Apparently they're called hami melon. Mm. Like that's another name for them. I see. But I guess that's all there? Yeah, that's all I have on him. Then let's move on to Paria. I love how much she was blushing when uh, they were talking about love stuff, specifically yeah. between Mrs. Smith and Talas. But but also later, she couldn't when handle she was, it. Passed yeah, out. Yeah, like she even passed out. <laughs> <laughs> but then, of course, also a little bit later, when she was sitting next to that boy whose father seemed somewhat keen on on having them marry each other, at least he was talking along those lines. Oh. And 
that's that's very exciting. I'm I'm very yeah. very stoked to see uh, what'll what'll come of this. Uh, has Perea finally found her match? That, I don't know. It could be. Uh, it there, there there is a bit of a tease by Mori at the end that mm-hmm. there could we could learn more about this. So we'll see. She does make the effort to give him a face. So uh, right. compared to some of the other matches that we've seen, who hardly had any sort of facial recognition. <laughs> mm-hmm. There there could be some hope that this could be the one, but who knows? Part of me wants it to happen, but also another part of me wants to wants to see some growth. Like I'm not I'm not saying like I want her to be rejected, like oh I want to see that 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 terribleness, but <laughs> I don't know, I want I I want to see where this where this uh potential waiting could go and maybe she'll find someone even better but um mm, right. if this is the if this is the one then this is the one like, let's, <laughs> don't, let's not miss our chance here but <laughs> right. that's kind of just my thinking yeah no that, that that's fair i definitely see that i think that this boy looks nice though like i, I don't know yeah. like I'm, I'm getting a decent first impression vibe from him obviously i am too it's very very minor but but still like <laughs> the, the little that we get uh feels feels pretty good yeah i thought the comedic four panel uh pages that we got Mm. with her were were pretty great absolutely honestly i could have a ton of those and be really satisfied (laughs) yeah uh she's just a really cute character to watch absolutely but i was curious and i don't know if you know this what how old is she do we know Obviously, she's of that. She's of that age. That's 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 the name of the bonus chapter. But what? <laughs> yeah. What is that age? Is is she and she, is she past that age a little bit? Because I think we understood that Amir started finding. They they were looking for Amir's uh, future partner at the age of thirteen. I think so. Mm. I don't think Paria would be thirteen. No. I I almost feel like she's maybe fifteen. I would also guess something like that, fifteen, maybe 15 even sixteen. Um, yeah, I, I feel like they've been searching for a while, like a couple years. Right. I mean, it feels. I, I also feel that way because it's become a, a struggle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah. I would I would definitely say like fifteen or sixteen, but I I don't think it has yeah. been outright uh, said or written. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, push comes to shove. It just opens up a bread shop, right? Exactly. Party of pun. Party of bread. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. The men will, will crowd to her, to her bakery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, speaking of that, I didn't write this down, but I thought it was interesting culturally speaking. Certain parts of the marketplace, women are not usually allowed to go in, or at least not, don't go in usually. Not necessarily. Maybe allowed is not the right word, but they just... It's usually just a man's place. Yeah, it seemed like the the like eating at the market is not generally allowed by for women to do, like eating publicly. Mm. Perhaps maybe that is like I I wasn't completely sure, but it seemed like based on the context given in in that chapter that, or at least the way I interpreted it, was that in this culture, women aren't allowed or uh, to eat in public or maybe they aren't like maybe maybe it's frowned upon to see women eat in public or something like that is what i gathered maybe i feel like allowed is not the right word just because Mm. no one was raising a stink about it when they saw them like they they seem pretty all, all okay with it yeah but you don't see any other women so i guess it's just not usual or not the norm yeah maybe it's just that for what for whatever reason Mm hmm Maybe this century, this time period of people are not as strict about it, but maybe in the past, the reason why they have that that custom is because it, there was a strict rule, maybe. I, perhaps. I don't know. Perhaps. Throwing out ideas at it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I imagine this is a, was a real-life thing, you know, real-life restriction. Yeah, I, I also feel like it should have been some sort of... something that Mori has read up on and include, in, included in the, yeah. in the story. Mm. Want to talk a little bit about Amir next? Sure. 
there isn't much, and I guess what I have isn't specifically on her, but mm -hmm. her birth family may or may not have had a run-in with the Russians. That didn't turn out so good. I know. Yeah. So, what'll come of this? <laughs> Yeah, you mention it. You, you you mention it. You bring it out there. You you can't leave it hanging. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I feel like we'll hear something about Hagal later on. Absolutely. And her love for pomegranates will never die. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, that was so fun. It is kind of an interesting fruit to have a an affinity for. I, I maybe it's a cultural thing, but I. I mean, I, I'll eat pomegranates, but they're not my go-to fruit. You know, it's like, oh, I really want pomegranates. I, I do, I don't know. I don't know. It's not for, not my favorite. Maybe they are more common there than they are uh, maybe. where you and I live. And maybe then it's easier to. I mean, grocery store, I can get a pomegranate if I want. Uh, sure. But you can get even more apples. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I but I don't need like ten <laughs> apples or twenty apples. <laughs> Someone does though. There, you know there are like apple addicts around these parts. Yeah. Or, like apple junkies. <laughs> <laughs> but do you have any other characters you want to talk about? Yeah, I'm just gonna mention Carla as well. Mm -hmm. As you mentioned, he races to Henry's rescue. I mean, he wasn't the main reason why he got out of jail, but he was. He helped you know, vouch for him. Mm. So I thought that was uh, great of him. I mean, he's such a, such a good, good guy along with Amir. Absolutely. I, going back to the cultural things about that market, it's so interesting to see everyone just suddenly start eating with each other. <laughs> yeah. Could you imagine going to a restaurant, buying <laughs> a bunch of stuff, and so just let people come in and start eating. <laughs> you know, they're not yeah. paying for it. They, they're just coming in. Now, some people will start bringing, I mean, in this case, people started bringing food for everybody, like a feast. Yeah. Now, that was really cool how it led to that. But what if no one, what if no one brought stuff? Like, I don't know. I, yeah. This culture is so interesting to me. I, it seems like strangers can be just as close as, as friends. And Smith even kind of commented on this, I believe, at the end of the volume where they're so willing to welcome people, but then they quickly let them go and really right. don't think too much about it. it it's such a, such a different way of thinking where, whereas my mindset, at least I feel like my culture is much more about maybe not as open to strangers, mm. but if you, become, if you become one within the community, then for the most part, you're, you know, you're treated as family and parting ways is, is tough, but you know, it's, you know, you're loved. Right. It's, it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It is very different in that way, but yeah, it is, it's beautiful. And, and seeing it portrayed in that, in that scene, uh, when they're eating together and, 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 and it, it's almost like, it's like the, the ones that join in on the feast, it's like, understood on some level that i i bring some too I, I bring some food as well something else and and then and then everybody eats from everybody's food mm. very interesting it is i wonder if like medieval europe was that like that at all i wonder i don't know I would assume maybe maybe a little closer to it compared to modern Europe, but yeah. But I would probably not think it would have been quite like that because it feels it feels more like that part of the world. Yeah. Then let's head on into some predictions and stuff like that. Henry promised Carlock that he would come back to see them again. Mm-hmm. And. I wonder if his return to the Aeon House will be closer to the end of the whole manga, pot potentially. Um, oh, wow. I think, I think that could be kind of nice uh, to kind of have basically a majority of the story or most of the story changing focus between the Aeon family, Mr. Smith's whereabouts, as well as, I guess, anyone else who might be added to the story uh, throughout and for yeah, for most of it to not have Mr. Smith with the Ahan family, I think could be interesting, and I think it would make his eventual return, and and in, in this scenario near the end of the story, if I'm correct in this or whatever, uh, his return would be even sweeter if it's 
you know, in the last within the last few volumes or something like that. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I could see that being towards the end. I could also see him coming back in the middle, you know, mm. but the, the story just keeps keeps going on. Uh huh. I don't think it'll be soon. I, I could be wrong, but I don't think it's going to be a quick journey to Turkey and then come back. Right now. Uh, mm. Although I'm unsure how many villages will be stopping at on that on their journey. Um, it's a pretty long route that they're taking, so... Yeah, it's pretty long. So it could be a lot of places that they can see on the way. I mean, first, they, they cross this sea that doesn't even exist anymore, by the way. Yes, it's dried up. I read about that as well. Yeah. <laughs> the Aral Sea. Aral Sea. They, they have to cross that, and then they go down to go below the Caspian Sea. So it's... Yeah. It's a long... It's going to be a long journey. Very long, yeah. Maybe... I mean, obviously, we'll fast forward some bits, of course, but mm -hmm. I, think, I think we'll visit some villages in between. Maybe even see a bit of... Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised, especially since Ali mentioned it, his village, that we end up there at some point, maybe on the trip back. Right. They have no choice, and maybe they have to go mm. through his village. That would be nice. And I think it would be interesting to see the Persian culture represented in this book. Absolutely. And I think regardless of whether we go specifically where uh, Ali is from, I think they're still going to go through Persia. Um, they have to. Like, because that is where the route is taking them according to what, what they showed on the map. So yeah. it, it will be, we, we, we will see parts of northern Persia regardless. I... I... Can't help but be curious if the watch, pocket watch, would be found by somebody uh, relevant to the story. Ah. Could it be interesting if Tala somehow found that? Oh, um, yeah. Maybe, maybe heartbreaking, but maybe mm -hmm. through some means she's able to reunite with him and she holds on to that pocket watch to <laughs> keep her sane as she guess struggles to find a new husband maybe i don't know interesting yeah i actually hadn't thought about at all the the pocket watch being brought back but that that's an interesting thought i had definitely i guess pondered the question about whether or not henry will ever reunite with talas like i think that mm -hmm. that's a rather big question that one could ask after the, having read this volume yeah and i think I'm kind of sad to say that my my feelings about that are mostly pessimistic. Um, yeah. About the possibility of that, I think this is it. Kind of, uh, it will be like the, this. This event will forever be a part of Henry's sad backstory now, and yeah. he will he will remember it and he will grow from it. Uh, in due time, I think. Yeah, I agree with you. That, while, while, I, while I do mention, or I do wonder about the pocket watch, I don't know if it's realistic or feasible for, maybe that those words the wrong thing. I don't know if that's the direction she wants to go in. Uh, mm. Having this kind of tragic, like you said, backstory for Smith is, uh, is good for his character and, and make him appealing to the reader, I think. Yeah. Uh, it would be nice to have some sort of, or, you know, a resolution and a happy resolve but there is something poetic about tragic endings as well yeah so yeah yeah i i think my my prediction on that is that he he will never see her again and we as readers will never learn her fate and i'm fine with the pocket watch never coming back at all especially since we were just talking about how it's him kind of letting go in a way or moving on yeah but I don't know. It could be a fun thing to bring up later on. Could be. I'm hoping to hear about the Hagal Russian relations. Mm. You know, maybe the story eventually moves to that village. I don't know how we get there. It does seem kind of wild if Amir and Karlik would end up going to the village. But it maybe if it just gets so bad, Amir can't bear it. Maybe I don't uh, know. Right. That seems dangerous. I mean, I mean, it. Given what we know about her personality, like I guess I wouldn't be too surprised if she would ride over there to check out uh, what's going on. You know. Yeah. Potentially, and may maybe they would go like a little bit of a bigger group and and visit. You know, maybe Karlik and Yusuf and 
maybe a Kunbek would come as well. I don't know. Maybe some others from the village. Bring some sheep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, could be could be used for good use. You know. Yeah. Oh, you don't have you don't have Mr. Smith there to unleash them. So <laughs> maybe, maybe it work out. That's true. <laughs> Um, uh, but I think that could be a good a good story arc for a new bride. Definitely, and and you know I I think I don't necessarily think that we need to have any of the main cast there. I think we could we could view that story through Azel. I think he is a a perfectly good kind of I guess side protagonist for that part of the story potentially. Yeah, I agree. Padia needs her arc, and if it feels like we're <laughs> about to get it, maybe. Yeah, it definitely feels that way. I think she will get betrothed, betrothed in. I know this maybe kind of kind of tricks what I was saying earlier, but I wrote I, I wrote down. I think she'll get betrothed in the next volume, maybe two. I think it will mm. work out somehow. Yeah, whether it be with this guy or a different different person. Mm-hmm. I have a good feeling about him, but it, there is, like I said, there is that part of me that would like to see it somehow. <laughs> so this sounds bad. Fall apart, but it, mm. it but it. It builds up Padia somehow mm. to where she finds the actual perfect guy for her. Yeah. Uh, or perfect future for her. But if that it, but if this guy is is the one, then so be it. Let's have it. Let's do it. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, w- whatever the case though, I'm sure the next volume will give us some some at least decent focus on her and her endeavors with that whole thing. Yeah. Yes. I think by their journey's end, Ali will find a girl that he likes on the journey because he's so confident mm-hmm. that he doesn't have anybody he likes because he's going to wait till he has money. Oh, yeah. But, you know, <laughs> I'm telling you, love does not wait for you to be ready. No. Love will, love will hit you. <laughs> no, I, I love that. Whether you're financially good or not. Precisely. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's a great prediction. I, I'm going to want to stand with you on that one. That's great. Just uh, let let love take Ali unready. <laughs> a magic carpet ride. Um, <laughs> is, is, that, is that racist? Maybe. Uh, maybe. <laughs> no. I don't know. <laughs> it's a Disney reference. It can't be. Yeah, Disney is never racist or like culturally inappropriate. No, <laughs> of course not. <laughs> of course not. But you know that that the magic carpet's been around before that as well. So. Yeah, uh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so maybe along those lines, I, I do think we'll get a new area, new bride. It, it, new area, new bride. That's that's every prediction is new area, new bride. Yeah. I, <laughs> and I mean, I feel like it's going to be pretty consistent. I feel like whatever new area it is, it will come through something that's been established already, whether it's through yeah. a place that um, that Smith and Ali visit or if it's mm-hmm. something related to Halgal, Halgal. or Numaji, yeah. you know. Yeah, Numaji is definitely an option. I think yeah. Numaji may be a little later, though. Potentially, yeah. But eventually, eventually, I'm sure we'll get focus on that. Yeah. Lastly, I think I mentioned this previously, because that's when it was mentioned in that in volume two. Mm. What could the item be that that Smith is retrieving? We still don't know what that mm. is. Exactly. It seems <laughs> it seems kind of strange. Like he he's asked for something, and it's not clear what that is what could he need i wonder is it spy gear no (laughs) (laughs) yeah i i generally don't know i i I don't know what Mm. what he would need sunscreen like i (laughs) that i'm not sure i don't know i i actually i hadn't thought about it at all throughout this whole volume uh i think what i what i was leaning last time i though i don't think i we don't, I don't think we talked about it too much, um, but I, th- I think I think I think there is a decent possibility that it's just something minuscule, like something that probably isn't that doesn't matter particularly much, but to him it's exciting because it's something exotic or something like that. Okay, I guess. But why is he getting it from his English colleague? Because maybe that colleague had been somewhere and retrieved it in this region of the world. Hmm. Why does he need it now? Because he's been waiting and he's eager to see it and touch it. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, okay. I don't know. I don't know. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> but uh. But yeah. I don't know. I don't know. 
I don't think we'll find out for a while. I mean, depending no. on how obviously quick their journey is, but I, mm. I don't think it's going to be super quick. No, I, I imagine Mori will take her time with depicting that whole thing. Cool. But uh, we got through this whole volume without any nudity, James. <laughs> Yay! Hey, ask and you shall receive. Uh, although I've come to understand that ha see, le letting someone see you with your hair down, at least a woman letting a man see her with the hair down mm. is almost comparable to to uh, nudity in a way i guess in their in their culture yeah and i i believe that's still to this day kind of a, a thing in in mm. those types of cultures mm. so yeah that, that's obviously very different <laughs> from what we are used to yeah absolutely yeah um, absolutely but uh yeah it is, it is interesting mm -hmm. but yeah i think that was another interesting volume Ah, I really liked it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it brought some tragedy to the story that I, I don't think we really had too much of previously. Uh, right. Yeah, not that much. Mm. Not that much. And I think that going forward, we'll have a mixture of good feelings and bad feelings or tragic tragedy. Yeah. Uh, and I appreciate that in uh, storytelling like this. Absolutely. Like, I, I was really enjoying the just good vibes of the Ahon family and just how sweet and just absolutely wholesome everybody was. Yeah. Um, but th this this is a nice change of pace, uh, what we got here, for sure. Indeed. Then, listeners, if you enjoy our content, you can follow us on Twitter at Umami Manga, and it would be lovely if you'd like to support us by rating our show on the podcast platforms and subscribing to our channel, Umami Manga, on YouTube. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next time when we'll talk about Volume 4. Bye-bye. See you later. But then I also have the Konosuba game, which I just kind of bought because obviously I'm a Konosuba fan, but I'm also expecting to get kind of be trashy in a way. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm just doing it just to, for the for the lols, really.